Well, it's Endeavour Field, the home of the Sharks, for the first time in 1982 to see their clash with third place Canterbury. It's not been all sweetness and light for Cronulla of late. They've had two losses and a draw in their last three outings. The Cronulla pack, though, takes on a more solid look this week with the inclusion of former Kangaroos second rower Steve Neen after a stint in reserve grade following a pretty lengthy suspension. Now, this match is very much a watershed for Cronulla. A loss could see them tumble to seventh on the ladder. A win keeps them in touch. Steve Rogers plays well no matter what position he's selected. The fact that he's at lock is purely an expedient by the club. Gary Wright, the former South player, has been doing well at 5'8 for the Sharks. He scored five tries so far and his sharpness could cause Canterbury's 5'8 Gary Hughes a deal of trouble. Cronulla fans are going to expect a big lift by their team today. Their form hasn't been good. Conversely, the Bulldogs, with two wins and a draw in their last three games, are travelling well in third spot. On last week's display against the Lawarra, they've captured some of their 1980 magic. Steve Mortimer schemed magnificently, engineering some marvellous breaks and some tries. Peter Mortimer at centre combined magnificently with his brother Chris and threw down the gauntlet for representative selection while fullback Greg Brentnell let it be known to all and sundry that he is the uh, Australian number one fullback and intends to keep it that way. A game full of promise for try scoring fans. Let's have a look now at the team's record against each other. Since Cronulla entered first grade in 1967, there have been 31 premiership matches between the two clubs. Canterbury have won 17, Cronulla have won 13, drawn one. At Endeavour Field, there have been 12 games. Cronulla have won seven, Canterbury have won five. Let's have a look now at both sides onto the field. And through come the Cronulla team, and this is the full side. Rick Burke, John Jarvey, Greg Mullane, Chris Gardner, Jim C, Gary Wright, Perry Haddock, Steve Rogers, Kurt Sorensen, Steve Neen, Dane Sorensen, Roland Beckett, Peter McNamara, and the coach... Greg Pierce. Now Canterbury led by George Papanis, the full side, Greg Brentnell, Tony Armstrong, Chris Mortimer, Peter Mortimer, Steve Gearan, Gary Hughes, Steve Mortimer, Steve Folks, Peter Casillas, Graham Hughes, John Coveney, George Papanis, Jeff Robinson, coach Ted Glossop. Referee, Mr. Kevin Roberts. Whistle blast, Kevin Roberts gets them away. Steve Gearan gets the first kick. Touched by Rick Burke, and he's going to lose possession, as you know. He just managed to get that on his foot, uh, trying to kill it uh, before he uh, fell on it and very nearly lost possession. But uh, Cronulla in possession, Barry Ross on the sideline. Yes, yeah, an ideal day for football down here. The ground's very, very good condition, and uh, the wind favouring Canterbury Banks down. It's a nor'easter, and Cronulla won the toss and decided to uh, run against it in this first half, and so Canterbury had the use of it. Just outside their quarter now, and uh, Perry Haddock, arguably the smallest man in rugby league. Sorensen, Beckett, Kamara loses it behind, no knock on, that was the six. That is the Australian fullback Greg Brentnell cropping up into a blindside position. Scrum 10 yards outside the Cronulla quarter. It's underneath the Cronulla feet, Gary Wright. He's busted Gary Hughes. And they're nice to get a guard. And a guard is steaming upfield fast, making good inroads. About eight yards now from the Canterbury quarter line. Paddock with a long pass out to Neen. Neen back inside to Burke. Burke into the quarter. Under a swinging right arm tackle from Stephen Folks. McNamara steams ahead. Wright was running so fast beside him he fell over. Sorensen nicely out to Belayne. Gardner can't crack the tackle and there's a well for Canterbury. Armstrong hung on grimly there. Neen. And the run around with McNamara. Getting some ball skills, this young fella, Peter McNamara. Rogers gets a high bomb. Rental flies for it. It's going to be a try. No, Burks wrapped it up. Oh, that went very close. Six to go, a yard away. Canterbury under enormous pressure early. Beautifully weighted kick that from Rogers. Neen loses it behind, and that's the second tackle. Crisscross move. Beckett tries to go on his own. A lot of talking going on in the Cronulla backs at the moment. Haddock. Gary Wright. Got a pass away and couldn't get it to Rogers properly. It went to ground. He dropped it and fell on. This is Roland Beckett's uh, batting average as far as hooking is concerned. 
175 for 145. Earlier games today, reserve grade, Cronulla 10, Canterbury 7, third grade, Canterbury 13, Cronulla 8. Brittle's kick is a towering punt and a good one. Good 25 yard game. Steve Mortimer, Caponis, back to Casillas. Beckett was the tackler. Caponis, Steve Mortimer, Stephen Folks. On the quarter line. Caponis, Mark Hughes. Kevin to his feet. Caponis now. Steve Mortimer floats a long one. That was well taken too by Tony Armstrong. He was hit just as he took it. Mortimer, Casillas. Gave the beautiful pass to Steve Mead. He unloads it to right, right there to Gardner, who had two men over but couldn't get the pass away. Ted Blossom having a look at proceedings and uh, wondering about the result of this game, no doubt. Dane Sorensen. McNamara. He doesn't actually uh, run, it's more like a, a giant pachyderm lumbering along. Beautiful pass out there to Malay, but he's tackled effectively. Swung to the ground by Gira. Paddock. Very right. All the ball astray. Here's a try. Coming up surely to Stephen Folks if he gets any sort of bounce. Well, he's been tackled only a metre away. Has Gardner, who got to it first, how I'll never know. That's a certain try save. Stephen Folks didn't appear to be able to stride out then, Barry Ross. I'm sorry, Rex. Stephen Folks, I thought, was a little bit quicker than that. Yes, well, of course, the ball didn't come up as well as he, he thought it would. Then he kicked the ball and he only hit the edge of the ball and it bounced up in the air more than going forward. Yeah, and of course, that enabled the Cronulla. As I thought he had a bit of a break and didn't, uh, they all picked him up fairly smartly, didn't they? Yes, they did, but I think he was slowing down watching the ball too. And a ricochet, Greg Malone, under Haddock. Little fella submerged under an Armstrong tackle. Up to halfway come Cronulla. A bit breathing sigh of relief after that. Burke, back inside the Rogers. Beautiful football for Rogers to Beckett. Involved twice in the play there. It's another Beckett scrum win, is it? It's not. It's a scrum loss, a penalty loss against Cronulla for collapsing the scrum. Scrums 4 to 1 in favour of the uh, Sharks. Penalties 3 0 in favour of Canterbury. Still no score in the game. Penalty. Let's see that incident again. It's a rather futile thing to give away a penalty for a trivial thing like that. The referee was right. See McNamara holding the leg of the player, not allowing him to get to his feet. Gearing from 16 yards in from the sideline, a yard inside the quarter. Kicking across a light breeze. Just have it aimed at the right hand upright, or just outside the right hand upright. And that's exactly where it stays, though it fades late, but. Uh, the breeze obviously not going to affect that very much. Still no score, and we've had 17 minutes play. Out on the 
full. Well, little can be said about that. There's Greg Pearce cogitating on how an international footballer can kick the ball out in the full. An Australian captain. If they keep giving them to Gearan, he's going to kick one eventually. This is his simplest kick. Directly in front on the quarter line. Breeze such as it is at his back. Now they will go. So first one to Canterbury Turner. Gearan makes a meal of it. I don't think it's a knock on. The referee indicating it's not. Retton all the way to Winger Armstrong, who's upended unceremoniously by Rogers. Caponis and Rogers, two Australian captains involved. Retton all getting that big left foot to it, and my heavens, it is a big one too. Burke takes it, uh, going down a laundry shoot that was. Kurt Sorensen on the rampage up the blind side. Beckett, Paddock, Wright. He's going a bit crossfield today, Gary Wright. He's got to get himself moving forward to use that good step of his. And Sorensen on the surge. Paddock, right, Rogers, beautiful pass out to Kurt Sorensen. Folks, the tackle. A line, and that's the six. Six nil the penalties at this stage in favour of Canterbury. The error situation, Cronulla three, Canterbury one. The score, two nil in favour of Canterbury. Capanis, Armstrong. Casillas through one tackle. That's a high tackle, not a dangerous high tackle, but the referee has still spoken to Nina about it. Casillas injured, holding his back. He may have landed awkwardly. Nina, it wasn't. A, let's see the whole incident again. It wasn't a head-high tackle in the accepted sense of a swinging arm. I think it was the knee of McNamara that's done the damage. Having said all that in Neen's defence, it would be very stupid for him to continue to tackle high. He's been sent off a number of times in his career for high uh, offences. Beautifully taken by Folks. Rolls along the ground. McNamara has it for Cronulla. A pass a very amateurish effort. Jarvie. Bust two tackles. Had a full back line lined out there and he had to go for the third uh, tackle bust. Rogers, Beckett, Wright, Burke. Canterbury defence is pretty strong. Doing our usual award today, the player we judge to be the best of this match. Received $400 and appear on Sports World the following week. The controversy corner panel. As we get a pass popped up to see from Neen. He's got no support at all. There's not another for another player within 20 metres of him. Burke has to go down for that. And that's the six. Well, that was a, a tragedy for Cronulla. The pass from uh, Neen was a good one midfield, putting C into the opening situation and not a skerrick of support inside. That'll be another note in 
Uh, another note in Greg Pierce's book. That pass may have been Mean McNamara. Can I get the ball back? Rogers, right. Burke. Beckett, nicely taken by Gary Wright. Gardner, back to Wright. Back on the inside to Neen, who did very well to hold that. Right round his knees. Beckett, Haddock, Dane Sorensen. I think Graham here is an indication of his power. Beckett, Haddock, McNamara. Lobs the pass over the top to Haddock. It's a long floating angle out to Gardner. Gardner's got a bit of room up the side. Goes for the big step. Oh, he's been tackled only about a yard away. Loses the ball. Brettel has it. Now the referee calling for the knock on. Burrowing his way in. And for Proponis going down on the broad of his back, more specifically. Looking back to our award winner, the uh, controversy corner panel will judge all the weekly award winners, and at the end of the season, the Mazda Footballer of the Year will receive a magnificent Mazda RX7 as his prize, valued at $17,000. The player responsible for the King G try of the match each week receives $150. player responsible for the Mazda try of the year will receive a mighty Mazda 626 valued at $9,564 Dane Sorensen three yards out Beckett Rogers nicely to Kurt Sorensen and under a high one he was traveling when he took that too Neen Paddock McNamara and loads back to Beckett Look at showing a reasonable step there to avoid Casillas. Last tackle. 2 0, Canterbury lead. At its kick. Brenton will go to fly. Oh, beautiful! What an object lesson this player is to any young footballer aspiring to be a fullback. Peter Morton. Or a high jumper, Rex. Yes, or almost anything that requires courage. Armstrong. 26 minutes gone. Just the penalty to Canterbury. The difference. Gary Hughes. That's a forward pass offside from Hughes. The referee in a very good position to see that. Steve Mortimer has obviously made a comment. Let's see it again. This was the pass judge forward. And he's quite right. Rogers 10 yards in from the sideline and two yards into the quarter. 14 from 25. Success rate very good, 56%. He's hooked that one way away to the left. Didn't strike it well at all. And the score remains. Canterbury 2 for another. Capanis comes up with another scrum win for Canterbury. Chris Mortimer wrapped up. Greg Mullane. Steve Mortimer. Gary Hughes, Peter Mortimer. Casillas. Very much a game of static defence at the moment. A trench warfare. Gary Hughes. Steve Mortimer, starts again. Through. Crossfield and Lades nicely to Armstrong. Leaves his way forward. And that's only about five yards out. There's a big hole out there if they can move it. That could be it. That will be it. Gear in the corner. Finally the oh the touchdown just disallowed it. Uh, head on so it'll be interesting on that one. Back to the quarter line. Let's see it again from head on perhaps. Now watch it. A long floater. Gear and put in the clear. The defence. Well, that's going to be a talked about one. The touch judge, as you can see, beautifully positioned. And one of those things that the camera 
that's in the farthest point of the ground from us and uh, I'm not prepared to argue about that one it'll be a very good decision by the touch sides perhaps very controversial Neen. and that one rattled his teeth folks at Coveney yes I thought that one wouldn't have done him a whole heap of good it's Steve Noon Dane Sorensen. And they've gone over the injured again. Jarvie's picked up the loose ball and Neen really in trouble. He's been hit hard, knocked down and collapsed on. Kurt Sorensen runs away from Gary Hughes. Nicely back inside to C. C using good footwork and good acceleration. Now Cronulla with players positioned deeply. Rogers. Paddock, Malone. Nicely back inside the garden of Emperor Burke. Burke to Jarvie. Jarvie can't get his arms free. That's good football from Cronulla. Game come to life as an attacking entity in the last five minutes. Neen on his feet coming back into the play now. Win. That's the third in a row to uh, George Papanis. And the ball's gone to Brown. Graham Hughes came in to kick the ball away. May have connected with a boot. See it again. It was accidental. That's Steve Neen again. There he was. Gary Hughes lashing out for the ball. May have got Neen again. He's really been in the wars. Don't start something. Pickett, McNamara. Big fella needs to get into running shoes, in my view, sprinting shoes. Takes too long a stride. Good perk. Good tackle. Look for the bomb now from Rogers. Rogers number eight. There she goes. Stopped on for, far enough forward. Who's got it? Geary. Got a minute and a half to go. Unofficial time. Error situation. Cronulla five, Canterbury five. Number of times each side's given the ball back to the opposition. Steve Mortimer, Casillas, the workhorse. <laughs> Steve Mortimer's kick is not going to find touch. Charvey has it. He couldn't have gone closer, uh, quicker to the uh, defence than he did then. Rick Burke. <laughs> Jarvie. Two yards from halfway. Paddock. Dane Sorensen. <laughs> Arada Rogers. Then to Beckett. It's a bad pass that's taken there by Mortimer. Peter Armstrong Graham Hughes or just rides him into the ground an official time under half a minute to go Chris Mortimer Gary Hughes Steve Mortimer the Silas back inside to Steve Mortimer Pops one over the top to Armstrong. Canterbury at their best after Steve Mortimer pops up one to Peter Mortimer. It goes over the sideline off to Chris Gardner kick. So at the half-time break, uh, an intensely interesting game of football with uh, little in it. Canterbury leading by two points to nil. Steve Gearan responsible for that penalty goal and he's had one from three. No score yet. To Cronulla. We'll be back in just a moment with all the action of the second half of Sevens Big League. Well, just having a look at that incident, the gear and no try, the referee uh, touch judge there, Max Thompson, very difficult uh, decision for him to have to make, but we're on the impression, having looked at it closely about a dozen times, that Gearan did score a try on the corner. You'll see Thompson drop his flag 
at uh, some stage there and have to go on and pick it up and wave it frantically. But nonetheless, uh, a very difficult decision to make, and I'm glad it was Thompson having to make it, not myself. Now, 2 0 at half time. Barry Ross has been in the dressing rooms with six to go, the referee Robert says. Barry. Yes, there's some drama in both dressing rooms today, Rex. Firstly, on that uh, Steve Gearan uh, try, they were adamant, the Canterbury players, and Steve Gearan himself, that he had scored. He said that ref uh, linesman uh, Thompson had ruled that he'd touched the corner post before grounding the ball. Anyway, Canterbury were very concerned with the scrums, as we said in the first half. Ted Glossop pointed out that Cronulla were screwing the uh, scrum on, the, on their own feet and that they had to tighten up in this regard. He was happy with their defence, and uh, they've got to be aware of the kick this half with the Cronulla side having the win. Cronulla, meanwhile, John Jarvie, the winger, the left winger, had about 10 stitches inserted in a very bad cut on his lip. And he's gone back on now, and uh, Greg Pearce spent some time pointing out to the Cronulla defenders they should watch the blind side and watch for, for Brentnell's raids. Right, so an intensely interesting game this. The game poised one feels, watching it for the first try scorer to win it. That's a proponent scrum win, Brentnell, from a Steve Mortimer pass. Armstrong, wrapped up by a little haddock. Steve Mortimer. Graham Hughes. Steve Mortimer, folks, still penned inside their quarter. Coveney, Dane Sorensen down below, lean over the top. Now that's a penalty against Cronulla for inside the five. Brentmore's left foot kick is a low ground gainer. About 25 yards with that one. Right through the middle of the Beautifully tackled the pass is astray. Granada will come up with it through Rogers. He gets it quickly to Gary Wright. He starts a raid immediately. Which with a little step, he had men in support there. I think he would have been well advised to have passed. Oh, Beckett. Clever bit of football from Rogers there. Get to the loose ball and scoop it up straight away to Gary Wright. McNamara loses the ball in the tackle. Here it comes up with it. A hard hit from Graham Hughes caused that ball to jolt out of his hands. Robinson. Ponis, Steve Mortimer, Casillas, Crossfield, Buster, and finally a despairing dive from Gary Wright puts him down. Hughes, switch a play from Mortimer across to Brentel. Granada defence now being put to the test. Mortimer drops it behind him, no knock on. Gary Hughes, folks. Elaine the tackler. Gary Hughes, a little dummy. Put it away to Graham Hughes nicely, then to Peter Mortimer. Clever bit of play by Hughes. Running one way virtually and passed the ball back the way he was uh, coming. Scrum win. Cronulla, Haddock. Beckett finds a hole on the defence outside the quarter. Rogers calling for ball runners. Dane Sorensen. Got Canterbury moving backwards now if they can keep the impetus going. Rogers. Burke. Rogers, Haddock, Gary Wright, Malayne. Kurt Sorensen. He had in his mind to pass that, but uh, the Graham Hughes tackle was too good. There's 
is uh, Hatch, who's likely to be Steve Neen's replacement, should he come off. He scored two tries. In which match was that against him, Barry? It's Western Suburbs, I think, was it? A couple of weeks ago. And was dropped the week after for the next match. Differential penalty. Nine two penalties in favour of Canterbury Bankstown. Negating the strong scrum count they've got. Gear it. Crisscross move. Folks evades one tackle. That of uh, Steve Neen. Thomas, now Robinson. Gary Hughes was running off his shoulder there and uh, Robbo couldn't unload the pass. The Ponis, Steve Mortimer, will kick over the top. Oh, G. Wright went for a long throw right there. That's going to be a try, is it? Yes, it is. It's a, a one hand put down. That's a clever bit of play. Very clever bit of play from Armstrong. A little kick through, and Gary Wright should be chastised for this, trying to knock the ball dead. That uh, cost uh, Eastern Suburbs a try only last week against Parramatta. See it again. Gary Hughes, uh, I'm sorry, Gary Wright with that absurd business of trying to punch the ball away like a soccer goalkeeper. Watch Armstrong get it down. Good one. Gearin now from a uh, yard in from the sideline, directly on the quarter line, kicking across this slight breeze. sideline that is a great goal and his skipper George Papanis gives him a round of applause back at halfway. Cronulla nil, Canterbury seven. Mechanic <laughs> stolen it. Who's got it? No, Canterbury come up with it. Brentwell was the man that fell on that, the fullback. Peter Mortimer, a beautiful little body swerve, got himself into the clear. He's evaded. No, he hasn't. Paddock puts him down to the halfway line. Just by one leg. Now Graham Hughes running onto the ball well. Cronulla in disarray now. Canterbury backs line very deep. Brentnell. Midfield between the quarter. Halfway, Gary Hughes sets up a dump for Chris Mortimer. Get him back on side, Robert. Steve Mortimer runs from dummy half to Folks. Folks came under a high tackle there and attempted swinging arm tackle from uh, Kurt Sorensen. Penalty situation nine to three in favour of uh, Canterbury. There's the Papana stats, 71 from 121. 58.7% success ratio. Differential scrum penalty to Canterbury. Come on, George. Papanis. Steve Mortimer, Casillas. Lose the ball, the referee says play on. Gary Hughes. Right, the tackler. Parnas. No one to pass to, he thought. Coveney from dummy half, a surge. Might be a a drop goal on here at some stage. There's the move beautifully executed by Graham Hughes. And Graham Hughes may go well close to scoring. He is. That's a great bit of football. He instituted that. The uh, favourite uh, move Canterbury put on by they involved their fullback. And uh, on this occasion, it didn't go the usual way. He showed it inside, then out. Classy bit of play. Brettel unloaded. Mortimer got it away to Graham Hughes and the big dive. 
That's a great one. Let's see it from head on. The crisscross move. Everybody took the dummy. There's the uh, lovely bit of play. The unloading of the pass to Graham Hughes. What a quality bit of work that was. Even at 10-0, Ted Glossop, the uh, Canterbury coach, is not going to get a, a victory smile. He's going to save it all up until the end. Here on 10 yards in from the sideline, about a foot and a half out from the quarter. Across that light breeze. Struck that beautifully. It's over. 12-0. Canterbury lead. And one would think that's a winning lead. Volley manages to unload. Paponis, Casillas, Kurt Sorensen swung him to the ground. Coveney, Steve Mortimer, Gary Hughes, Chris Mortimer. Folks, little dummy, that's the halfway line. Steve Mortimer was sighted in that one, got himself right through the gap, run around the uh, defence, lobs it back on the inside. Oh yes, good play by Steve Mortimer. Now they've got it on the on the move, Gary Hughes unloads nicely to Paponis, Paponis gets it away, and play just finishing with Armstrong about a metre from the line, there's Brettel on the charge. Now who's in now? Coveney, I think, has taken the final pass and surged over the line, and this is now becoming an embarrassment to Cronulla. Canterbury, 15. Very likely 17. See it again. It came from that magic break by Steve Mortimer, and the stand-up and the tackle there, the unload to Coveney, and surging over from head off. Brentnell stood up in that tackle there. Coveney takes it from him. And right on the line, he scored it. Gearin, one yard inside the quarter, 10 yards, uh, 20 yards in from the sideline. Robin Salt into the wound. And the scoreline now, an embarrassment, Canterbury 17 for another nil. See a replay of this match next Sunday morning at uh, 9.30. Rick Burke has Cronulla winner scrum. 27 minutes gone. It's got to be a penalty. <clears throat> Rogers clapping for the ball. Replay of this game next Sunday morning on Channel 7 at 9.30. The sports world starting at 10.30. Two and a half hours of solid... Sporting action. Haddock. Beckett. Gardner. Canterbury's defence has been one of the outstanding features of this game. McNamara. And Sorensen. Hatch took that well. It's up, plays it forward, has another run at them. He's going to do it on his own because there's nobody. Uh, Coveney has been called out for an incident in that tackle. And Robertson. Little punch being thrown. From head on, watch it. Oh, well, there it was. A bit late and behind George Paponis. We couldn't see through, George. I don't really know why they kick for touch in those situations. I'll just take the tap and do it quickly. McNamara. Cronulla have uh, started to earn the ire of their supporters. And there's a try to Beckett. 
through the dummy and went straight through. Canterbury very slack on that occasion. Been told to come and pick up the ball. 17-3, too little and too late. See it again. The opponents having a fair bit to say. There's Beckett. Just finding a gap. There it was. Rogers' kick is successful, so the score reduced. Canterbury 17, Cronulla 5. Gear and restarts. Just uh, nine and a half minutes to go now. An impossible task for Cronulla, one would think. Kurt Sorensen, Curry Haddock. Beckett. And a loose pass away, picked up by Gary Wright. McNamara out there nicely to Greg Belaine. Dummies back on the inside to Jarvey. Jarvey gets it away there to uh, Wright. Wright tackled about 15 yards out. Suddenly Cronulla have come to life. Haddock, Dane Sorensen, Rogers. Long floating pass to Kurt Sorensen. Low unloads out there to uh, C. C evades one tackle. No, he doesn't. That's the last. No, second last. Beckett. Burke. And this is the last coming up now. Now, what's the Haddock plan? McNamara. Play on. It'll be six to go. Hatch has got it. That was the Knocked down in flight by a Canterbury player. Gardner, Dane Sorensen. Nicely to Greg Malone, and he's in for a try. So they've come up with two tries in two minutes. Incredible. Suddenly Canterbury have opened up. Now there's the side on shot. A look at the head on shot. Kurt Sorensen, Dane Sorensen, carrying the ball in his hands. The line steps and over the uh, line through a Gary Hughes tackle. Rogers' fourth attempted goal. That didn't miss by very much. He's had a bit of bad luck with a few of his kicks, but the score remains Canterbury 17, Cronulla 8. Look at Cronulla keep the impetus going. Burke. Robinson the tackler. Dane Sorensen. Haddock. Gary Wright running as a foil. Kurt Sorensen runs straight ahead. Haddock. Gary Wright. Rogers. Out there to see, see he's got a bit of pace. Nice pass back inside to Rogers. Elects the kick, it's gone off the side of his foot. What a terrible kick. And had Canterbury shot to ribbons on that occasion. Very Haddock. Away to, uh, oh, picked up. The referee says not, uh, not dropped, and he was right. Sorensen showed enormous strength then to not allow himself to be pushed over the line. That's a terrible pass, beautifully picked up by Wright. That didn't give the uh, recipient any chance, and Canterbury came up with the ball. Burke put under enormous pressure there. Beautiful pass to Gearin. I uh, should have said Armstrong. Has the ball free, now into Beckett's hands. We think about 15 seconds to go. McNamara. Beckett. Haddock. Sorensen. Pass has gone very much astray. Who wants it? Greg Malone has it. There's the hooter. And the scoreline at full time reads Canterbury Banks down 17, Cronulla Sutherland 8. Our award winner was Greg Brentnell, the Australian and Canterbury fullback, who was involved in three of the 
Canterbury tries, was very, very safe under pressure, wasn't called on for any great defence, but took the bombs with uh, rare precision and great aplomb. Uh, now, the results in this very interesting round of football were still one match to play on Easter Monday, of course. Canterbury 17, Cronulla 8, the match we televised. South Sydney 9, defeated Eastern Suburbs 5 at Redfern Oval. Parramatta wait for this 54 of defeated Canberra 3 at Belmore. St George finally back in the winning list, 37, Illawarra 5. Western Suburbs in a highly controversial finish have got up by one point, 21, to defeat Penrith, 20. I'm told there was some area of doubt about the last Western Suburbs try. North Sydney, 13, defeated Balmain, 8, and of course Manly and Newtown to play at Brookvale Oval tomorrow. We'll be televising that match at the different time of 7.30. Now the competition table looks this way. Parramatta on 12, Canterbury 11, Manly with a match to play, South Sydney and West's all on 10, Cronulla and North Sydney on 7. Eastern Suburbs, St George and Balmain on six. Newtown on five with that match to play against Manly. Penrith four, Illawarra two, Canberra yet to record a point in the competition table. 